Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. In today's video, we'll be talking about a brand new controller from Daikin called the Daikin Madoka controller. The Madoka is a very cool, sleek looking controller that's going to be a great solution for both residential and commercial applications. It's filled with tons of features and we have a lot of information to get through in today's video, you guys. So let's jump right in. One of my favorite new features that the Daikin Madoka controller offers, which by the way has never been available on a Daikin controller before, is the ability to program and commission your indoor unit from a Bluetooth app on your mobile device. But more on this later. The Daikin Madoka controller is basically a newer, sleeker looking, smaller version of the Daikin navigation remote controller and it's compatible with any indoor unit that has a P1, P2 terminal connection. This means all of your VRV indoor units are compatible indoor models with the Madoka controller, as are all of your Sky Air indoor models. Additionally, some of your mini split indoor models do have a P1, P2 connection, so those will also be compatible with the Daikin Madoka controller as well. Any indoor unit that has the S21 connection, by the way, is not compatible with the Madoka controller. So only some of your mini split indoor units will work. Now, if you think about it, the Daikin Nav controller has been out since around 2009, give or take a few years, at least in the North American market. And it's had multiple software versions throughout its history. It's been in a dire need of some hardware updates, though, for quite some time now. And that brings us to the Madoka. Now, if you order a Madoka in the North American market, at least at the time of this recording, the only color available is white. If you order a Madoka anywhere else in the world, you have white, black, and silver as your color options. I'm sure at some point, the North American market will also get these colors. It's only a matter of time, but as of right now, white is the only color we can order for the Madoka controller. The Madoka controller comes packed with features, some which you're used to from the nav controller and some which are new. If you're familiar with the nav controller's installation process, the Madoka controller seamlessly wires in the exact same way using the 18 gauge two conductor stranded wire you're already used to using with the nav controller and you simply wire it into P1, P2 of both the Madoka controller and the indoor unit and you're ready to set things up. Users have multiple display options, just like the nav controller, but rather than only having three pre-configured display options, like on the nav controller, the Madoka offers much more flexibility to the user, allowing them to pick particular points that they want displayed at any given time. The Madoka also features things like control of multiple indoor units within a single group, both single and dual set point capabilities, set point range restrictions, auto changeover configuration, multiple temperature sensing locations. So if you want to sense temperature from the return air or directly at the Madoka controller, all of these features are available just like what's offered on the nav controller. So what makes the Madoka so much different from the nav other than its looks? Well, for starters, it has a blue LED ring that can be programmed on or off, something the green LED on the nav controller could never be programmed for. The Madoka also only comes with one button, which is inconspicuously hidden on the top side corner of the Madoka controller. This button turns the controller on or off, but serves no other purpose. All of the user control is done on the touch screen on the front of the controller. The Madoka can also be mounted flat to the wall, service mounted, but it comes with a mounting plate in case you need to install the Madoka on an electrical box, which is a valuable accessory the nav controller does not come with. Now, one of my favorite new features by far is the Madoka Quick Set app available on both iOS and Android devices. 
This Bluetooth app allows the technician to program both the Madoka controller and connected indoor units directly from their mobile device. When it comes to selecting field settings, one of the most time-consuming parts of a project's startup, the Madoka controller is going to make quick action of this because any of the settings that need to be set on any given project can actually be pre-programmed into the Quick Set app and then simply uploaded to the Madoka controller while on site. That's right, all of your field settings can actually be pre-programmed into your app from the comfort of your office and then very quickly uploaded to each Madoka controller while you're on site making a very streamlined startup process. Now, if you are one of those technicians who does like to do the field settings manually, the Madoka controller can be programmed directly at the controller. You do not have to use the Quick Set app, but it is a very cool time-saving feature that I'm extremely excited to use moving forward. There are a lot of great features the Madoka controller offers, which I'm personally very excited to experience between the app that I can use every day on the technical side to the refreshing user interface that I can experience as a homeowner myself, the Madoka controller definitely gets good marks from me. But as with all great things, the Madoka does miss on just a couple of notes. For starters, the Madoka does not come with Wi-Fi. It does have the Bluetooth connection that you can use to set up the controller, but it does not have Wi-Fi. So if the user wants to connect and control and monitor their Madoka controller from anywhere in the world, you will need to add a DKN Cloud Wi-Fi adapter to make this possible. Scheduling is also not available on the Madoka controller directly, Although inverter heat pumps typically don't need a schedule to perform well because they're designed to maintain all the time. But should the user want to have a schedule, they would again need to add that DKN cloud Wi-Fi adapter and then schedule their system directly through that app. The only other thing that I noticed was when I was installing the Madoka controller at my house last weekend, and it's regarding the tabs on the back plate. Now, if you're familiar with a nav controller, the face plate and the back plate come apart simply by taking a flathead screwdriver. There's a little slot at the bottom of the nav controller. You insert your flathead screwdriver and you twist and the face plate pops right off the back plate. It's very simple. Unfortunately, you don't want to try this with the Madoka backplate because those tabs will break if you insert a flathead and simply twist. What you actually want to do is insert your flathead screwdriver into those slots, but then press upwards because then that will take the tabs inward so that you can release the Madoka controller from the backplate. Again, do not twist. You will break the tabs. The Madoka does have clock, date, and daylight savings time features, as well as both Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature options. And in North America, at least, it comes with English, Spanish, and French as your language options, with English set as the default from the factory. The Madoka controller also has a dimmable backlight that must be illuminated prior to any of your commands from the touchscreen being accepted, all features just like the nav controller have. One of the new menu features though on the Madoka controller separates the user from the technician in order to keep all of those back end programming settings which could affect the performance of the system completely unavailable to the user. There's three user access levels directly on the controller and there are two access levels when using the Madoka Quick Set app. When using the controller directly, there is a basic operation menu and there's an administrator menu, both which are available to the user, followed by an installer menu, which is only available to the technician. And when using the Madoka Quick Set app, there's a login for the user, which gives them access to the basic operation menu and the administrator menu via the app while there is a separate login for the technician in order to change any of the installer settings so it keeps them separate. Also, because it comes up a lot in commercial applications specifically, controls can be locked out at the Madoka controller to prevent unwanted changes, say to the set point or to the mode of operation. But this is one of the few settings that has to be set up through the Bluetooth app by the technician. 
Now, anytime a new controller comes out, I always get this question. Can I mix and match different controller types on my equipment? Let's say, for example, I want a Daikin 1 controller in my great room, but then I want to put Daikin Madoka controllers everywhere else in my house. Can I do this? Absolutely. What you can't do is you can't put a Daikin 1 controller and a Madoka controller both on one indoor unit. But you can put a Madoka controller on one indoor unit and then put a different Madoka controller on a different indoor unit and then put your Daikin 1 controller on a third indoor unit. That is totally possible. And you can even weave in the NAV controller should you wish as well. You just need to make sure that you don't have different controller types both wired to one indoor unit. Keep each controller wired to its own indoor unit and you'll be fine. So is the NAV controller getting phased out now that the Madoka has officially launched? Or if I have a project where I'd like to use NAV controllers, can I still get them? This is a great question. I've already been asked a few times. From what I'm aware of, at least at the time of this recording, no, there are no plans to phase out the NAV controller. The Madoka is just an additional option to choose from moving forward. And so now you'll have the Madoka, the NAV controller, and the Daikin 1 to choose from on your projects. So to wrap things up, where do I think the Madoka controller is best suited for? After all, Daikin now has three really awesome controllers, each with their own unique features. The Madoka controller is generally priced relatively similar to the NAV controller, but it comes with that setup app, which is a huge time saver on the project because I can just pre-program all of my settings and then upload them when I get to the job site. Plus the Madoka controller is way better looking and way more up to date. So the Madoka definitely gets the win here in this case. The Madoka does not come with Wi-Fi though. So if Wi-Fi is really important to me, then maybe going with the Daikin 1 smart thermostat is a better solution. But then consider you're paying the premium for the premium thermostat. So maybe sticking with the NAV or a Madoka controller and then just adding a DKN cloud Wi-Fi adapter is the better way to go. All I'm trying to say here is Daikin offers a flexible offering so that you can mix and match what best fits your preference. With that said, residentially or commercially, I think personally the Madoka controller is going to lead the way as the biggest bang for your buck type of controller. Of course, this is only my opinion based on what I've seen and experienced with each of these three controllers, but you also have to remember the third-party thermostat adapter is just around the corner and it will be here soon, so you will have four different options to choose from, so who knows. I hope the information in this video and the information in my past controls videos has helped you on your controls journey. Daikin has made a huge commitment focusing on the user experience on their controller platform, and I'm really excited to see what they come up with next. Well, guys, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'm on my way to a thousand subscribers, you guys. So I appreciate all of your support. If you have any questions or comments on today's video, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos you'd like to see from me, put those in the comments as well. I do read all of your comments and I always do my best to respond so please make sure you comment. Thank you guys so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you have an awesome day.